this is Dr. Robin Lewis, a naturopathic physician practicing in British Columbia, Canada. Today I want to talk to you about a supplement or a key nutrient that I'm seeing all over the place. I'm finding it in a lot of workout supplements that you see at some of your favorite supplement shops and I really want to break it down for you today. It's in a lot of supplements because of its use in energy metabolism and there's a lot of claims around it helping increase strength, endurance, and recovery when it comes to workouts. Now, are you ready to hear what it is? It's CoQ10, or better known as Coenzyme Q10. Now, CoQ10 is not just used for exercise, it's also used for cardiovascular health and some other areas of health, but I'm only going to be talking about its clinical use for exercise today. And I really want to break down for you what it is and does it really help? Is it really going to help you increase your strength at the gym and improve your recovery time? All right, so what is coenzyme Q10? Well, simply put, it is a fat soluble antioxidant. So what do I mean by that? Fat solubility means it's compatible with fat versus something that is water soluble, meaning it's compatible with water. So this is important for how you absorb this nutrient. So it is going to absorb with fats. So it's often given when you eat a meal that contains fat and that will improve the absorption because when you eat it with things that contain fat, it's going to stimulate enzymes in our body or different digestive juices in our body to help break down that fat so you can absorb it into the bloodstream. So this is really relevant for something like your gallbladder. So your gallbladder is a little organ attached to your liver and it secretes something called bile. And that really is one of the major players when it comes to fat digestion. So for someone who has had your gallbladder removed, maybe due to a previous disease of that gallbladder, they're gonna have a really hard time breaking down fat and a really hard time absorbing CoQ10. So I digress, but it is important to understand that it is a fat soluble antioxidant. So the other aspect of that is the fact that it's an antioxidant. So what do I mean by that? It combats oxidative stress. So oxidative stress is when you have too many reactive oxygen species in the body. And these are essentially compounds that have oxygen that is very reactive and destructive inside of the body. So we create reactive oxygen species in relation to things like pollution, radiation, alcohol, poor diet choices. We're exposed to a lot of things that create oxidative stress inside of our body and therefore we have antioxidants both internally and through things that we consume in the diet to help counteract that so it doesn't get out of control in the body. So CoQ10 is a fat soluble antioxidant by definition, and that's gonna be really relevant when we figure out how it might be helpful for things like your exercise and recovery process. Lastly, I just wanna mention that there are two main forms that you're gonna find in supplements that you buy off the shelf. There's gonna be ubiquinol, which is the technical term for CoQ10, or ubiquinone. So there's two different forms. The ubiquinol is technically the more bioavailable and active form, but ubiquinone is the more commonly seen product on the shelves. It's been around for a lot longer, so it's in a lot of the research. Ubiquinone is also a lot less expensive, so a lot of people will opt for a ubiquinone formulation because it is cheaper to make. Now, for some people, especially healthy individuals, it might not make a massive difference if you have ubiquinol versus ubiquinone because you can easily convert the ubiquinone to the more active ubiquinol inside of the body. But when you start to get older, so elderly, this conversion can go down and so those are really the populations I might recommend a ubiquinol over a ubiquinone for. Now, there's not exactly a consensus in the science, but that's generally how you can think of the two different forms. If you wanna err on the side of caution, go for the more active form, but do know that both really should be able to do the job. 
Now let's move on to why this product is being used for athletic performance and recovery times. There's two main theories for why CoQ10 would be useful for this. The first has to do with the fact that it's an antioxidant. So when we exercise, we actually produce oxidative stress. Now this is generally considered a good adaptive response as long as you're not overdoing it. So this is where we really lead into things like overtraining. Your oxidative stress is becoming too much to counter the recovery time. And so CoQ10, theoretically, because it can handle some of that oxidative stress, it could speed up the recovery time and counteract some of the oxidative damage that can happen as a result of exercise. Now you might be thinking, but there are a lot of antioxidants out there, so why couldn't you just use any old antioxidant like vitamin C? Well, CoQ10 has a second part to it that makes it especially helpful for things like exercise recovery, and that is due to its role inside of the mitochondria. Now the mitochondria is a part of our cell that makes energy. It's called the powerhouse of the cell, and it makes ATP, which is the energy currency of our body. And 95% of that energy currency is made inside of the mitochondria. And so CoQ10 is a part of the mitochondrial process of turning food, so things like carbohydrates and fat, into energy. It's part of one of the final steps inside of the mitochondria. So that is why, in addition to being an antioxidant, it also helps with the energy production, both of which are very important for exercise recovery and exercise performance. So that's why CoQ10 is making its way into a lot of these supplements. It's helping with the recovery and some of the oxidative stress, and it's also helping with energy production. And of course, as we all know, you need a lot of energy in order to hit your athletic goals. All right, well that all sounds very promising, but does it actually work when we try and put this into practice? That's really what we're looking for. So when they've looked at human studies, they've found that it's actually much more about the recovery and less about the actual exercise itself. So let me explain. For example, one of the studies that was looking at rugby players and taking ubiquinol, they found that it actually didn't really make a difference on the performance itself. So when they put these players on the treadmill, they didn't have an ability to exercise for longer or have more endurance necessarily during the exercise itself. However, there were a couple key findings they did find afterwards. So one of them was that it helped improve the oxidation that can happen to our lipoproteins. So these have to do with cholesterol. So when we have oxidized lipoproteins, it's actually very damaging to our cardiovascular system, so our heart and our blood vessels. And this is actually a very well-known phenomenon when it comes to people who are training really heavily, this can be really hard on your heart. So it does seem to help with that aspect of oxidation. Not all aspects of oxidation that happens after exercise, but it seems to help in this one particular area especially. And then the second interesting thing was they found that hours after the fact, your mitochondrial activity recouped a little bit better. So you were able to replenish that ATP a little bit quicker, which means theoretically you could probably recover quicker and exercise more often without hitting the overtraining. So this is interesting, right? Because it is often promoted to actually help with improving endurance and athletic performance. And if you look at it from a recovery standpoint, sure, CoQ10 does seem to have some significant impact on that, but it's not necessarily going to make you stronger during the exercise itself. It just might allow you to exercise more often. So I hope that you found this video helpful in guiding you on whether or not you should take a CoQ10 supplement for your exercise and recovery goals. If you're looking for something to help you lift heavier, you might wanna go in a different direction. But if you're looking for something to help with recovery, this might be the right supplement for you. And if you're looking for the most active form, ubiquinol might be the best route to take. If you want me to dive into any other topics, please let me know in the comments section below, 
and I look forward to seeing you again next week.